So I will take you through the chemical control system of uh, thrips in ornamentals and also insecticide resistant management strategies against thrips. So welcome to the, to the, for listening and questions. Next slide, please. Um, as I've as just mentioned by John, chemical control is part of the IPA management. And this sums up on how, what the grower would want, sustainability in crop pro, uh, production. You need also to save on uh, money and also time and integrating all these procedures and in a more practical manner. Next slide, please. Uh, what are the importance of chemical control in, in thrips management? Uh, use of insecticide has offered the main uh, effective management strategy. This is due to low levels, uh, tolerance levels for Western uh, flower thrips, that is in ornamental crops, and also um, low damage tolerance to, uh, for tomato spotted wilt virus. So the important is that we also need to consider the good coverage and penetration. This is uh, enhanced with the use of medium sized droplets. Um, also the importance when you are considering using the chemical control, also consider rotation of different groups of chemical and insecticides. This is to reduce uh, uh, risk to resistance and an integrated approach where elevates the constant insecticide pressure and also reduce the development of insecticide resistance. Next slide, please. Um, in order to ensure that you are using chemical control effectively, uh, you ensure that there's rotation of this uh, different mode of action of this insecticide. This is, will re, uh, delay the onset of the resistance and also prolonged efficacy of the products in control of, uh, in this case, thrips management. And when you're using co uh, chemical control, you ensure also you include the use of the insect growth regulators uh, available for thrips larvae control. So what we have currently is the lufenuron. And um, also in terms of application, the recommended you make at least two application at five day intervals. This is what will ensure that there is reduced population of the, of the thrips and also uh, gather for overlapping generations of the Western flower thrips. So also when you're uh, considering using also chemical control, ensure that you also check on the compatibility of the products to other products that are available. We also talk about the biocontrol, adjuvants, biostimulants, and also fertilizers. And um, also ensure that you read and follow the label in instructions. So this is very important. Next slide, please. Um, I will take you through some just examples of different chemical groups against thrips that are available. Uh, a few you can also see some of the products that um, are sy at Syngenta portfolio. So it runs from the natural light. You talk of um, organophosphates, pyrethroids, neocotinoids. Uh, next slide, please. You talk of, of uh, avamectins, the urea, carbamates, the IGR that I've just talked about, nerestotin analog, and also as a reduction, which is even as a, a non mode of action. So, all these also are uh, in different IRA codes, as uh, indicated, indicated just um, beside it. So, next slide, please. There are also products that are registered uh, just in Kenya. Uh, with label recommended against thrips. So there are a wide range of the chemical groups, but you can see neocotinoids are the most uh, mostly registered for this purpose. Next slide. Um, and, as I mentioned, uh, I'm going to handle the topic on insecticide resistant management. That is very important, especially when you're doing uh, chemical control as the part of the IPM program in controlling thrips. So uh, I, would, I would like us to understand what IRM means. This is a reduction of the selection pressure, pressure to insecticides. This is by, by doing what? By rotational use of insecticides, 
and also minis minimizing the dosage and the number of applications you're using and also using these insecticides when only it is necessary. So over reliance on insecticides, uh, especially with the same mode of action, and can lead to development of resistance, even other than these products um, failing to control the Western flower thrips in this uh, case. So what is the strategy for doing the eye insecticide resistant management? I've talked about rotation of the uh, uh, different mode of action insecticides. This is uh, will ensure there's uh, efficacy in control of uh, Western flower thrips. And also there will be no cross resistance with other conventional insecticides based on uh, we are using. So vertical integration is also very important in IRM and uh, use of multiple and compatible tactics to control one group of pests. Next slide, please. Uh, why do we do this uh, resistance management? Um, resistance uh, to uh, insecticide that has led to reduce effectiveness of this uh, insecticide in controlling the pests. This results in the loss of crop value in terms of quality and also yield, and also the loss of this insecticide because uh, the effect effectiveness has reduced. So what is the recommendation? You use the existing and new insecticide now with care and responsibility, bearing in your mind that there's a risk in, in, in development of resistance when you use the same mode of action insecticides. Next slide, please. So what are the factors that lead to the development of resistance? There are three main factors. Those are the pest risk, we have the chemistry risk, and we have the agronomic risk. All of these results to overall resistance and all of these factors, we are under control of them. So when you talk about the pest risk factors, what are they? Elijah has mentioned about the reproductive uh, rate of thrips specifically in this uh, case, and also generation and seasonability of these pests, the behavior, the migration, we talk about the feeding behavior, also they have a wide host range. So those are the pest uh, risk factors that are results, can result to development of resistance. In terms of the chemistry of the product that you're using to control uh, thrips, some of the factors you consider and you have control over are the insecticidal activity, residuality, and also the mode of action of that uh, product. It, what about the agronomic risk? We have the pest management practices that you have in place. And here we are talking about the I, IPM and also the cropping system. All these contribute to the over, of, overall risk, uh, resistance risk. So next slide. Um, I, I would want to take you through um, mechanisms of resistance. We have two mechanisms of resistance, target site resistance, we have metabolic resistance. So in target site resistance is more just in, in this uh, illustration, we can see there is a change in structure of the target sites. And also uh, in the second uh, mechanism of resistance, that is metabolic resistance. This is where there's destruction uh, of the products of the insecticide. Uh, this, is, this is due to development of the natural detoxification enzymes inside the insect uh, metabolism system. Next slide, please. So uh, what are the agronomic practices that will help us prevent insecticide resistance when you're we we dealing with the um, uh, chemical insecticides? One, we all know about, um, um, th these are the recommendations as by, by the IRAC, that is the Insecticide Resistance Management um, Action Committee. So we've talked about the um, IPM practices where you are incorporating all these other practices and also considering, uh, most importantly, as John had, had mentioned, the uh, monitoring of the pest population and also be able to identify and know the life cycle of the thrips. Um, the second important practice that can help you uh, reduce um, insecticide resistance is the following the label recommendation. This will help you not to reduce or even increase the rates that are uh, from the recommendation label. Also just follow the recommended timing 
of application and also the number of application you are, you are working with. And use of the recommended spray volume is really important. So most importantly, but not least, also is just to know the mode of action and rotate this different mode of action of insecticide among successive generations. Next slide, please. Um, I will take you through an, uh, just examples where resistance selection happens and how does it happen when you use the same mode of action and what is the scenario when you use a different mode of action. So you have a pest population and uh, inside a pest population, we have the susceptible uh, varieties. And in this case, you are using the yellow color pest and also the pink color are the ones that are resistant. So when you expose this um, uh, population to one mode of action in say in the first generation, you find that there are resistant uh, uh, individuals that get to the next generation. And what happens in the next generation, if you're exposed to the, the same mode of action, it is going to reproduce and it, going forward, you can see the population of the pink, which are resistant varieties has increased with time. So also in the next slide, please. This is when now you are using a different mode of action across generation. The same population, you, 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 you use one mode of action in generation one, the resistant individual case to the next generation, but now it's now exposed to a different uh, mode of action uh, insecticide. And you can see in the next third generation, you cannot stress the, the pink ones, which are resistant. By the time you are getting there and you're using different mode of action insecticide. So this one leads to reduced resistance selection with time. Next slide, please. Also, just to um, uh, illustrate, rotation of um, different mode of action groups among pest generations. In the first row where you're using the same arrow, the same arrow shows that the same color of the arrow shows that the, that is the same mode of action. And you can see in the first row, we are using one mode of action product in the successive generation, even despite this in the first season and the second season. This is high risk to uh, resistance. And then the second one show the second row shows that they are, they are on translation between the purple and the and the green, meaning that there are two products with different mode of action, but now you are using them within this uh, successive um, uh, generation. Now again, still um, successive generation exposed to the same mode of action, so we still have the risk of resistance. In the third row, where we are having different color. Uh, the purple and the green, but now in not in successive, successive uh, generation. That one, there's low risk of um, uh, development of uh, in, uh, uh, resistance. How about when you get to the fourth row? You can see there's alternating, even within the generation, we have different mode of action you're using. Now, as, again, when you go to the successive generation, you are even using a different one. So this one, there is very low risk to development of resistance. So kindly consider using different mode of action, uh, even uh, not within, within generation and also, um, and, and then in successive generations. Next slide, please. So just uh, uh, an explanation of the treatment window where you're asking first pest generation, we have, you can have an example where you are having two applications per generation. But again, you can see the different colors of the arrow, even within the, uh, the same gen generation, you have different mode of action. And also among, just between generation, you have um, a different mode of action products. So that is a good practice. And also the an example where we are having even four application per generation. You can see with a different arrow setting showing that there are different mode of action within generation and also between a successive generation in that season. So that is just uh, the same explanation that we are rotating different mode of action among treatment windows. That is a good practice. Next. Uh, Syngenta has uh, insecticide resistant management strategies where we are having different mode of action products um, that you're using to control thrips. So still these are, these are not the just the final ones, but 
We are also doing more research to just come up with the unique chemistry products that has a unique mode of action and also help you to, to manage uh, insecticide re resistance. So uh, I know we are quite familiar with all these other products and also different uh, chemical groups they belong and also how they, they, uh, they work and also they applied in different generations. Next slide, please. So this is a, a, just an explanation on how the Insecticide Resistance Action Committee. So uh, this is part of what we, they, they also ensure that you, this is a key, it's a dictionary to resistant management that you know every chemical group uh, where it belongs and you don't use the same chemical products in the same group. Next slide, please. So this is an example of where we are having group three, insecticide on trips management, and you alternate with group four, in, uh, insecticides. You alternate them with group six, insecticide, and you alternate also even with group eight. That way, you are able to manage um, insecticide resistance. And also at the same time, you are even having the products uh, able to control the, 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 the trips. Next slide, please. So what are the uh, main benefits from um, if we do an insecticide resistant management to the grower? One, you are increasing the product life. That means that you can incorporate uh, products in your spray program, which can be used. And also you can be able to, uh, growers shall be able to also save on cost and money and time. This is the in the num there's no need for increasing number of uh, application of an insecticide or rather the spray interval reducing the spray interval, and also you have the more sustainable crop production. That means you have the less AI as also was a concern when Elijah talked about it. So this ends to a happy grower. Next slide that uh, would uh, appreciate uh, insecticide resistance management strategies. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening.